Let us say it with force. Look at him and say, don't you speak against the Holy Ghost. Don't you speak against the Holy Ghost. You say, why, Pastor? Because Jesus said, if you speak against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven you in this world, neither in the world yet to come. And that's how serious he is about the Holy Ghost. Read it for yourself, verse 33. I'm just going right up to about 30, 37. He says, either make the tree good and his fruit good. We are talking about trees, ain't we? Amen. Verse 33 says, either make the tree good and his fruit good, or make the tree corrupt or bad and the fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. Amen. Oh, boy. Amen. Somebody say, oh, boy. Oh. What have you got growing on your tree? My Lord, folks got all kind of stuff growing on their tree. They got pain. They got grief. They got greed. They got sickness. They got hate. They got selfishness. They got loneliness. They got jealousy. All kind of fruit that are growing on your tree. Be careful what you got growing on your tree. In other words, be careful what's growing in your life. Be careful when you entertain things and you don't know everything about it. Be careful because it will bring you to a place of rottenness. It will bring you to a place where you will fall. Be careful of backbiting and backsliding. Be careful of hatred and blaspheme. Be careful of trouble and pervertedness. These are all fruit that will grow on your tree. And if you don't get rid of the fruit, it will cause the root to be rotten. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, you might not want to hear this, but I'm going to preach it anyhow. Verse 34 says, oh, here. And verse 34 says, oh, generation of viper, how can you being evil speak good things? But out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. In other words, whatever fruit that's in your heart, it's going to come through your mouth. I don't care if you said, I didn't mean to say it. I was just kidding. I was just joking. It came out of your mouth, didn't it? And if it came out of your mouth, then it came out of your heart. And if it came out of your heart, that's your fruit. That's why you have to be careful when you're dealing with issues in life. Be careful that when someone do something to you or say something to you and you speak out of anger. For he said in verse 35, a good man out of the good treasures of his heart. Everybody say treasures of the heart. Treasures of the heart. A good man out of the treasures of his heart bring forth good fruit. And an evil man, a man that's gotten rotten fruit, will bring out of every evil treasure, bring forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle, every unemployed word that you speak, that man shall speak, shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. You realize that? Well, Pastor, I, I didn't mean to cuss you out. But you were getting on my last nerve. I just want y'all to know I haven't been cussed out, but I've been cussed at. It is a big difference, you know. Come on, somebody. And verse 37 says, for by the word thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Yeah. Look at what somebody said, you need to be justified. Need to be justified. No, don't say it. Y'all said it real soft and tender. <laughs> Look to him and say, you need to be justified. You, be justified. you see, it, it is a dangerous thing to have fruit growing in your life and in not producing where others are blessed by. It's a, it's a dangerous thing to, to be in a family tree and everybody look to you and call you rotten. Everybody look to you and say, you ain't nothing but a nut. Come on, somebody. And even though in this life your physical family or your family tree may reject you, you have to thank God you're in the family of God. You have to thank God that you are producing fruit for the glory of God. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say that when Jesus was walking with his disciples one day, and 
I want you to understand he, there are two uh, particular parables in the scripture about fig trees. And one in particular is that the, the man who owned the vineyard oftentimes was checking his trees like oftentimes God check in on you and me. Amen. He check in on you and me to see if you and I are producing fruit. Look at somebody and say, I hope you're producing fruit. Oh, y'all say the real soft and easy like. Come on, somebody. See, I'm, I'm getting ready to dig in your psychic now. This man went out and for three years. He checked on one particular tree that was a fig tree. And after three years, it wasn't producing no fruit. And the, and, the, and the man that owned the vineyard told the keeper, cut it down and get rid of it. It's not producing no fruit. Amen. The keeper had a design his heart and said, don't cut it down right now. Let me cultivate it. Let me fertilize it. Let me work with it. And if it don't produce next year, then you can cut it down. What are you trying to say, Pastor? I'm trying to say to the church today that many folks that are in the church, they look like a good fig tree. They have a form of godliness. But they're denying the power they are. When God is trying to grow fruit in your life and you refuse to bring forth fruit, you're good for nothing. When Jesus looks on your tree, look in your life, are you producing fruit? You get deeper than that. He was going to cut the tree down, but what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying after three years, it wasn't producing, but when the master has something to say, the keeper said, let me work with it. Jesus is trying to work with you today. He's trying to draw you into a place where you can produce more fruit. That's all a fruit tree is made for is to produce more fruit and make room year after year for more fruit to grow on the vine. Are you producing fruit today? Or is somebody shaking your tree? Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but if anybody's going to be shaking your tree, you ought to let the Holy Ghost shake your tree. He ought to shake you up to a point where you don't even feel comfortable with the things that you're doing until you come to please God. This tree, for some reason, must have started producing tree. Now, I didn't know this, but... And I'm no treeologist, but I do know a little bit about trees. Amen. And in my yard, I was often, they planted a cherry tree in my backyard. And I was looking every year for some cherries. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> All who like cherries, raise your hand. Then how come you didn't say amen? amen. I like cherries. Come on, somebody. Amen. You can say amen. You ain't got to be all bashful. Well, amen. Year after year, this beautiful cherry blossom tree will bring forth cherries, and I was wondering, what's wrong with that tree? And it wasn't until a patient of mine told me the reason why it didn't produce cherries because that's not a female tree, that's a male tree. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Come on, somebody, because we often associate reproduction with female. Come on, somebody. And he said, apparently, when you first planted a tree, apparently the bees or whatever animals that pollinate didn't pollinate your tree. Amen. Look at somebody say, I want to be pollinated by God. I want to be pollinated by God. Oh, my, my. I told you, I'm digging in your psyche now. I'm going to get even deeper. Who's shaking your family tree? Amen? I'm reminded in Scripture that there was a king by the name of David. Y'all know that. And you know the wrong that David did before God, amen? You know he laid down with Bathsheba, it was wrong, it was sinful. But then even in the midst of his wrongness, Nathan the prophet, God was going to deal with David, but God saw his repentant heart. Now when you have a repentant heart, it's not just to change your mind, but to change your heart. You got to change your heart if you want to please God. Because whatever is in your heart is going to come through your mouth. So David pleaded before God that God would have mercy. And Nathan the prophet came to David and told David, God saw his prayer and had already put away his sin. But because of his sin, God was going to bring his trouble on his family. 
Oh my God, you have no idea the 